This map started off 50 years of controversy. It is the Dogon map of the Sirius star system. It's called the Drawing of the World of Women or the Drawing of the Heights and Depths of the World. This is Potolo, Sirius B, the egg of the world where the Dogon claim all life began. This is Eme Yetolo, Sirius C, showing rays around it and it's put in the center of the egg as the sun at the center of the solar system. This is Sirius A, Sigi Yetolo, or Star of Yasigi. These two are very interesting. Yurugu the fox, who may be Anubis, and Nomu, the fish, who may be Isis. This represents Sirius C's planet. The small spiral shows a satellite orbiting around it. Neyantolo, star of women, where the Nomu may live now. This is another image of the Sirius star system, putting it all together so it might be easier to see. Why is Sirius so often spoken of? Sirius is the brightest star in the nighttime sky. Sirius can be seen from almost every inhabited region of the Earth's surface. The Dogon also say the third star in the system will appear to us. The appearance of Nomo star is connected with the return to Earth of the monastery of the universe which is very similar to the idea of the Nephilim or the Watchers. This event has already happened February 18th, 2007. The Dogon await the return of the Nomo and so it seems so does NASA. Columbia and the satellite to now just passing over the west coast of uh, northern Africa. The home of the Dogon tribe who prophesied the return of the Syrian gods and goddesses, the Nomos, was in Mali, northwest Africa. Was it a coincidence that the shuttle was passing directly over northwest Africa, their precise location during the astounding incident when the tethered satellite was swarmed by UFOs with the signature of the star system of Sirius written all over them? But as the Dogon priests were keepers of this ancient knowledge from pre-dynastic Egypt around 3000 BC, and the shuttle would be passing directly over Egypt within a few moments, it appeared as yet another coincidence beyond reason. Because the Dogon tribe migrated to northwest Africa originally from Egypt in 3000 BC, we would have to look at what the ancient Egyptians knew about the star system of Sirius. Herodotus described how the incredible maze of canals and passages bringing water to so many of the sacred temples and shrines, even the pyramids themselves, was a sight that he felt surpassed even the pyramids themselves. The great Egyptian goddess Isis the wife of the chief of the Egyptian god Osiris, symbolized as the all-seeing eye, was herself also symbolized as an all-seeing eye with a throne. 
Osiris was said by one of Aristotle's companions who visited Egypt heard of an ancient myth that Osiris could not walk because his legs were grown together. Does this tell us once again that he too was an amphibian from the star system of Sirius? Known to the ancient Egyptians as the star system Sirius herself, Isis tells that I am she who goes out to the dog star. Because she is the wife of Osiris, they must both be the same kind of beings and they must both be from the same star system of Sirius. Isis spoke of her travels to the star system of Sirius, so how did she travel there? Was she actually just visiting Earth from Sirius? Did she travel to Earth from Sirius in a spacecraft? Being a goddess of water, would she travel between Earth and Sirius in a watery spacecraft, just as the Dogons told? Both the Dogon and Isis called Sirius the dog star and symbolized it as a dog, but why? Perhaps it was because the great Egyptian god Anubis symbolizes a half-man, half-dog god was said to be the god of the star system Sirius by the ancient Egyptians. Anubis was also known as the god of the dead who would guide the pharaohs and the spiritually adept of ancient Egypt upon their death in a celestial boat to their heavens in the star system of Sirius. The mystery as to what caused the water erosion around the Sphinx has baffled archaeologists since its discovery. The water erosion markings were much too high on the Sphinx to suggest that the Nile River had ever flooded that high. But Herodotus' accounts of channeling water to fill small lakes that encompass the shrines of their Syrian gods and goddesses. Could the ancient Egyptians have built these giant water receptacles to make a place to stay for their half-human, half-amphibian gods and goddesses as they would visit them from the star system of Sirius? The mystery of the Sphinx revealed itself to Robert Temple as a half-dog, half-human instead of the half-human, half-lion pervading theory. Temple argues that the body of the Sphinx is too long in its torso to be a body of a lion, as lions have rather short torsos, whereas dogs have very long ones. So Temple felt that the body of the Sphinx was a dog, as an emulation of the Syrian god Anubis, symbolizing what the Dogon tribe called the dog star Sirius. But once again, Temple extracts from the Greek historian Herodotus that the body of the Sphinx was originally lying in a man-made lake surrounded by water, explaining the mystery as to why the Sphinx was so eroded by water at such a high level. This also demonstrated that Anubis was a god of the waters. As the great gods of Sirius living in Egypt were masters of water and presumably knew how to manipulate the waters, could they send in direct balls of water from deep space and bring rain in large quantities and transform the arid deserts into a thriving oasis with rich agriculture? It was written that Egypt in ancient times had a rich and thriving agriculture. Could these ancient masters of water have turned a desert into an oasis because they had such power over the waters? We are reminded of the many great miracles of mastery over water. When Moses had God part the Red Sea, when God caused the great flood in the time of Noah and warned him of the flood well in advance of its arrival. Could this be because Noah's God had mastery over water and he knew the flood was coming because God just had to send huge amounts of water in from deep space and have it rain down on the earth for 40 days and 40 nights? Robert Temple also wrote in his book, The Serious Mystery, that the Dogons actually believed that Jesus too was in Nomo from the star system of Sirius and therefore a god who had mastery over the waters. The great masters of water could also direct and send giant falls of water down onto our Earth's atmosphere, guiding them around satellites in the shuttle to prevent collisions and the water would eventually transform under solar radiation into hydrogen and oxygen and the oxygen would transmutate into ozone yet another benevolent act by the ancient goddesses and gods to help heal our failing ozone layer. 
former science advisor to Walter Cronkite, Richard Hoagland, a profound space researcher, discovered that on May 27, 1999, NASA launched space shuttle mission number STS-96 at 6.50 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, three years after the STS-75 tether incident with the star system of Sirius at 33.33 degrees from the horizon at the launch site in Cape Canaveral, Florida. But why was Sirius at precisely 33.33 degrees during this launch, the highest symbol of enlightenment in Masonic wisdom? Because all of the founding fathers of the Constitution of the United States of America were highest degree Masons, and that the Washington monuments were all designed in the order of perfect architecture and masonry, this was no coincidence. Even the United States $1 bill seen with the pyramid with an eye hovering above it was a symbol used by the ancient Egyptians for their chief god Osiris, the husband to Isis, the gods of the Sirius star system. Were the highest powers at NASA using symbology to tell the star system of Sirius that they had understood just who our visitors are and that we have received their message and we were sending a reply that said yes we understand who you are and that you have returned. <coughs> Some people say... 